I met with Dr. Hannah Critchlow from the Department of Pathology at Cambridge University so I could get her thoughts and opinions on smart drugs. Why has there been no study undertaken to look into the long-term consequences of smart drugs? It's unethical for scientists to take a group of students, and it's mainly students who are really using these drugs off-label, off-prescription, so when they haven't got ADHD or Alzheimer's, um, it's unethical to test these drugs on people that are under 18 and there also hasn't been the time to see whether what the effects of 20 years of taking these drugs might have or even you know just two years worth of taking these drugs during GCSEs and A-levels for example the effects that that could have 20 years down the line so a uh, teenager's brain has got a huge amount going on so if, for example, you took your brain, if we peered into it, we'd see that there's lots of changes and connections in the brain, something's called synaptic pruning going on, which is where you're basically trying to make your framework of your, which is basically where you're trying to make your framework of your experiences and you get rid of any extra connections. And also there'd be fat wrapping itself around all your nerve cells to help insulate um, and help uh, electrical signals send messages in the brain. Um, if we peered into my brain, because my brain's a bit older, we wouldn't see quite so much activity going on. So it seems likely that taking drugs during that critical period of adolescence, all the way up to the mid-20s, when you've got all these brain changes going on, it's quite likely that those drugs might affect um, those processes and they might have long-term effects. But we just don't know yet because the studies haven't been done because it's unethical to do them. So probably, really, the students that are taking these drugs off-label now will start getting data from the students. Yeah, basically, we're going to get the data from those students. But it's not going to be a scientifically robust study, it's just an association study. Have you had previous experience of colleagues taking smart drugs? Uh, when I was finishing my PhD, so about seven years ago, um, I was discussing with other students at Cambridge University the fact that I was finding it really difficult to just, you know, get the final few chapters nailed and, and properly finished up. I was really struggling with getting it all finished and kind of having the attention and attention to detail. And um, some friends recommended that I try and get Ritalin or the equivalent over the internet. Uh, they'd tried it before and they'd said that it was really good. So they did recommend it to me. I didn't try it in the end because I didn't think it was worth the risk. Um, but it certainly is prevalent at universities. I've also known academics who have taken it before committee meetings, for example, or if they've got deadlines with grant applications. So it is a situation that's going on at the moment. Are you surprised by some younger students' attitudes towards smart drugs? So as part of the Smarter project funded by the Wellcome Trust, um, I've been leading with the Naked Scientists school visits to 20 different schools across East Anglia and we've seen almost 1,800 students now to get their opinions on smart drugs. And the opinions seem to be incredibly varied. So there's some students that are very for them, that are very much for them, and there's some students that really wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. Um, and I don't think that's too surprising. Uh, Why is that? Well, it's down to personal choice, and there's very little information out in the mainstream available about these drugs at the moment. And as we start discussing these drugs more with students and start talking about potential side effects and how much stuff is going on in the teenage brain and how these drugs could affect all that synaptic pruning, so it's like changes in connections in the brain and also how the fat is wrapping itself around the nerve cells in the adolescent brain. It's actually all that dynamic stuff in the brain goes all the way up to the mid-twenties. Um, as we start discussing how plastic the teenage brain is and how these drugs could affect, possibly affect, these students in the long term, then some students change their mind and say that they, they wouldn't actually want to take them. And then other students seem to be convinced that actually, you know, this is a very pressurised time in their life and they want to perform and they want to achieve. This is a crucial time in their life and they want to perform and achieve. Um, so the responses by students seem to be very varied. 
Give me one line that promotes cognitive enhancers and one that negatively describes them. So, as if you're in an advertising agency. So to promote them helps you to stay awake for longer, to help you learn. Um, okay. uh, no, that's really bad. Uh, okay. Helps you succeed in a 24-7 society. And then the, um, one that negatively describes them. Might rot your brain in the long term.